<clears throat> Hi, and welcome to uh, Stone Soup, the world according to sci-fi geeks. And we're going to do some reviews today. And starting yes. with sci-fi, we're going to talk about Terminator Salvation, the fourth Terminator movie. This yes. is the director's cut. Mm -hmm. I suppose the other one's in there too somewhere. Yes, but, it is. But we watched the director's cut. Mm -hmm. It had a much better script than the last one, although the right. last one did have a fairly decent script. It just it needed Linda Hamilton, yeah. who isn't in this one either. No. Uh, but yeah, part of... I mean, uh, she's kind of dead. Yeah. <laughs> the character, I mean. Yeah, Sarah Connor. Con Sarah Connor's kind of dead. Well, so. T3's T th problem is, is it that it was just rehashing the last two movies. It was just the same thing. This yeah. actually did something different. Yeah, because it was up when John was an adult. Mm -hmm. and In the middle of the war. In the middle of the war. And, and now, instead of rescuing John, John has to rescue Kyle Reese. Mm -hmm. Who's a teenage boy. Yeah, who's only about 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. 16 at the outside. Yes. He's got to keep, keep him going until he's old enough to be sent back to meet Mom to make John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very spoiler. important. <laughs> yeah. yeah, spoiler. If you, if, if you don't know this by now, you haven't seen the other movies and you don't care. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so uh, now, it should be noted, we love the first two Terminator movies. Oh, they are Fabulous, just yeah. terrific movies. Just gems of, of, of the sci-fi genre. genre. Wonderful writing, wonderful mm -hmm. acting, et cetera, et cetera, yes. et cetera. Terrific editing and directing and everything. Mm -hmm. The Key third three. one, yeah, not, not so, so much. much. Though I will give them points for, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, for actually ending with the bombs going off. You know, no happy ending, no hope for the happy ending. Nope. It, no, it, the no. Judgment Day was moved, moved, but it was not stopped. stopped. Because oh. if, if Judgment Day is stopped then the movies are done. Yes. And they don't want to do that. They uh -huh. want to make more movies. Well, mm -hmm. like we said with this one, they have moved on into John is, I don't know, between 35 and 40, mm -hmm. however the hell old Christian Bale is. And, and stunningly Yay, gorgeous, by the way. <laughs> what was that? Yay, Christian Bale. <laughs> Yay, Christian Bale. The <laughs> acting in this is just terrific. Mm -hmm. The boy who is playing Kyle Reese mm -hmm. as a teenager was also uh, Chekhov in the... Recent Star Trek. The, yeah, in, in the reboot of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. His name is Anton Yelchik, I think is how you pronounce yes. it. He is terrific. Mm -hmm. he, that, no Russian accent here, of course. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, no Russian accent. He's an American kid. Mm -hmm. But he is just fabulously talented. He is terrific. And he really is just about 20. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine actually knows him. But anyway. And, and he actually does look like, um, what's the, man, the man's name? Vane. Uh, uh, yeah. Michael Bain, Michael Bain, who, who played was Kyle Reese in the first, first movie. One. And in the second one, if you get the director's cut of T2, there's a lot of extra stuff. And you do see Kyle's ghost, as a yeah. word. Oh, yeah. One of Sarah's get, dreams. <laughs> get the director's cut of T2, mm -hmm. because it is fabulous. It yes. really is. There's like a half an hour more footage. And it doesn't drag. And it doesn't drag for a minute. It's, it's good additional footage, mm -hmm. which explains yeah, things. Backup. Uh, it gives a little more uh, insight into character, mm -hmm. things like that. It's and really good stuff. And it does explain stuff. something. Uh, at the end, do you ever wonder how it is John realized which Sarah was the fake? You find out in the director's cut. Right. I forget. You'll have to tell me. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Uh, no. Like this I say, the, act, the acting in this is wonderful. Yes. The script's actually pretty good, but there was some odd editing choices we watched the director's cut not the theatrical cut so maybe in the theatrical cut those those weird edits weren't there there are two in particular that stand out for us but so, uh, okay again yeah. this whole thing is a spoiler alert if you're if you're having issues just turn this review no off. off because okay. there's no way to talk about this without explaining what we're talking about mm -hmm. okay, okay the first so, one that we noticed what was the young lady's name blair there's a young lady named Blair, and she's talking to a fella named... Marcus. Marcus. They are important. Mm -hmm. We won't tell you how. But anyway... Um, they're trying to get their they're, way they're, back they're, to... Yeah, he, he has just rescued her from somebody, and they're trying to get back to headquarters, mm -hmm. and it's raining heavily. Yes. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's not raining. Blair's alone. It's Bra not like surrounded Blair's by... Blair's alone, surrounded by three guys we, you know, who just popped up out of nowhere, three and they are assaulting her. Mm -hmm. And then... Nice to know that, you know, global devastation is going to, you know, help improve human behavior, Misery. Annie. <sighs> Ain't that wonderful? Then Marcus pops up and says her. Yeah. But it's Mar like, yeah, but Marcus wait, what happened? How did they get separated? When did it stop raining? What the hell is going on here? Where did Marcus go? I mean, uh -huh. he couldn't have gone too far because it was right there. Yep. And she was still pretty much where she'd been before. Mm -hmm. But still, it was, you know, 
Something weird this, happened this, Yeah, there's something weird happened there. And I'm, I'm sitting there on the couch. And I said, wait, wait, what happened? What did I miss? And the rest of like, sometimes I, I fall asleep on the couch, you know, but I hadn't fallen asleep that time. Nope. And the rest of us <laughs> were like, I don't know. No. Wait, well, how did we get here? <laughs> and, the, and the answer just came back, we don't know. Mm-hmm. And then much later on, uh, they're in the middle of a... John is fighting with a T-800. Yes, the original... Arnie oh, model. Model. Uh, very Not, cool. By the way, Thank played you. by Arnie because, because they needed a younger body. Mm-hmm. But the cool thing is, yeah, they got the guy who did Arnie in that biopic of him, and then they mapped on uh, Arnold's Arnie's face. Piece. You know, na- 1980s Arnold's okay. face. So he it was just, terrific. Yes, you know, just like, you know, like Tron, how they had the young Jeff Bridges and the old Jeff Bridges. Same kind of thing here. And since, since this was supposed to be like a fresh off the production line model, I mean, he's naked. They hadn't even mm-hmm. clothed him yet. The face isn't quite perfect, but that's okay Mm -hmm. because this is actually a new concept. Literally, this is the first run of T-800s coming off the line. You may remember in the first movie that Reese says that that the the, the super realistic ones are still pretty, are are, are relatively new. Before that, they had rubber skin so they could be easily spotted. But these that have actual living tissue around the metal are still a new thing. Well, that's part of this coverage, the creation of that new kind of Terminator, Terminator with the real flesh. So it's, you know, the fact that his face is a tiny bit immobile works. Mm-hmm. You don't have any problem with it. It makes no. sense. Mm-hmm. What didn't Brand work was prototype. he and John are throwing each other around the room, and John should have been, been getting broken into teeny tiny pieces. But, you know, John, mm-hmm. he's very resilient. We cut over to where some of the other resistance fires are. That's fine. Then we cut back to John, except now, now John is running down a hallway with no explanation of how he, he got, got away. away. The last time we saw him, he was, you know, getting his butt kicked. Getting his butt kicked. <laughs> Pretty good. Mm-hmm. And we did not see him manage to get away. No. So it's uh, like, wait, how did he get away? away. The T- I, I, I can accept to, the running away thing, but how happened? did he manage to escape? And what happened to the T-800? Oh, oh, wait, there it is. Here he comes. And then they finish off the T-800. Mm-hmm. But, well, that takes a little uh, more, but yes. <laughs> those, those two cuts just, you know. Has a bit one. jarring. The rest of it what? is actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's a good script. It's mm-hmm. obviously a good script. But those two cuts are really rather jarring. And <laughs> the thing is, this was directed by McG. He's a really good director. He really is. Just he terrific. does a lot of he does supernatural. A lot of supernatural. <laughs> He's wonderful at this mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So what just happened there, I'm not sure. It could some be kind of mistake, I'm thinking. Well, it could be they lost some footage somehow. Oh, that could be, yeah. You know, those things happen. But anyway, if you like Terminator, mm-hmm. you will probably oh. like this. Actually, a very fascinating touch. Those of you who've seen Terminator 2, you may remember in the very beginning when you know, Sarah is narrating about what the war that's coming, and we get that brief flash of John. It is, of course, a different actor. But if you look at John, you can see he has scars down his face. In here, they actually put in how he got, got those them. scars. And that's just an amazingly subtle touch because, you know, like I so said, we see John for maybe 30 seconds there and we see the scars. They didn't actually have to do that. There's a good chance most people wouldn't have remembered. And even if they did, it was just a matter of, okay, he doesn't have them yet. Yes, he'll get them. Later. Later. Because there's, you know, there's still about another eight years to go <laughs> before um, the... Actually, I think the comment from Kyle was that he was from 2029. So this takes place in 2018. So that's actually 11 more years. Well, that sort of sucks well, for them. But there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> but but it does turn out that all of this sending people into the past, et cetera, et cetera, has informed the future. Because John knows what to expect. Yes, at least somewhat. Because after at all, least because somewhat. it's a slightly changed timeline, things are slightly twitched. Twitched. Yeah, so, but he does know that all this crap was going to happen and what to do about it. Apparently some of. people refer to Sarah Connor now as a prophet. Probably because if John said this, sooner or later the machines are going to create a time machine and start sending robots in the past to kill me personally, they're going to think he's gone crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, so he doesn't tell them that part because, no. well... Tch- Self-important much? Yeah. <laughs> Just like he doesn't tell them why he must, absolutely must, rec- uh, rescue Kyle Reese. <laughs> He's my dad, okay? He's 16. You're 43. I know. Just <laughs> don't even try to work this out. Yeah. <laughs> he can't tell them that. Because nope. then they'll say, okay, Johnny needs to go lay down now. No. <laughs> Forever. I one too many blows from the Terminator. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway. But, so as I yes. started to say... If you like the Terminator movies, you will like this movie, probably. Yes, most likely. You won't love it necessarily, but it does continue the story, and it does continue the story, not just redo it. Yes. So it continues it fairly good well. Flick. 
If there is a fifth one, we are of the opinion that it needs to end, literally end, with them finding the time, time machine. machine. And, you know, John, okay, now it begins yes. mm -hmm. again. Yep. So, thank you. Thank you. And bye-bye. Bye-bye now.